This is magnetite, one of the most magnetic substances on Earth. As you can probably guess, it has a diverse range of uses, from fridge magnets to generating electricity in power plants. But what you probably wouldn't guess is that your brain actually synthesizes these crystals, and you have hundreds of millions of them inside your head. Scientists are still unsure what role, if any, these crystals play in the brain's function. Studies have inferred that it may play a role in long-term memory. In animals, like honeybees, homing pigeons, and dolphins, magnetite is believed to be associated with the ability to navigate based on the Earth's magnetic field. While similar studies have yet to be performed on humans, we do know that Earth's magnetic fields affect everything from our mood to our ability to learn. Even stranger, research has begun to prove links between the electromagnetic field of our planet and psychic abilities. Could these crystals act like tiny antennas, connecting our brains to each other and to the entire planet? It may sound far-fetched, but surprisingly there is evidence. Let's look at what we know about the magnetite in our brains. To be honest, we don't know much. In 1992, the first evidence of this mineral in the brain was published. It was shocking to uncover that this highly magnetic substance was actually synthesized by our bodies. And while we don't know exactly what function it plays in brain activity, some interesting theories have emerged. A 2009 hypothesis proposed that magnetite plays a significant role in long-term memory. It suggests that cellular components of the brain communicate with each other through magnetic signals, with the magnetite particles acting as tiny antennas, simultaneously receiving information throughout the different parts of the brain. Magnetite also acts as an antenna for external electromagnetic fields, including the geomagnetic field of the Earth itself. And this is where things start to get interesting. An enormous body of research is emerging that shows substantive links between magnetic fields and cognitive function. Back in 1978, research physicist Dr. Robert C. Beck published preliminary research on the effects of extremely low-frequency magnetic fields on the moods of human subjects. ELF fields of 6.67 Hz, 6.26 Hz, and lower tend to produce symptoms of confusion, anxiety, depression, tension, fear, mild nausea, and headaches. On the other hand, fields of 7.8, 8.0, and 9.0 Hz produce anxiety-relieving and stress-reducing effects. They even mimic some meditative states. More recently, magnetic fields have been used in successful clinical practices for eliminating depression and bipolar disorder, with over 1,300 medical research papers published to date. The non-invasive treatment, known as repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, uses a wand-shaped gadget to zap away the effects of depression. While all of this is interesting and can pave the way for new therapies and treatments, a group of researchers at Canada's Laurentian University are exploring the role of electromagnetic forces in more extreme cognitive functions. This is Dr. Michael Persinger, a neuroscientist who has argued that all phenomena including consciousness, spiritual experiences, and even paranormal events can be explained by physical mechanisms, and they can be verified using the scientific method. Since 1971, he has been researching electromagnetic field effects upon biological organisms. And some of his recent studies sound straight out of a sci-fi movie. Dr. Persinger has shown in the laboratory that magnetic brain stimulation can create mental states conducive to human telepathy. A recent experiment placed two people at a distance in different rooms. Each was surrounded by an identical computer-controlled magnetic field. When a light was flashed in one subject's eye, the person in the other room showed responses in their brain as if they saw the flash of light. As Dr. Persinger stated, we think that's tremendous because it may be the first macro demonstration of a quantum connection, or so-called quantum entanglement. If true, then there's another way of potential communication that may have physical applications, for example, in space travel. On a much larger scale, correlation has been shown between the geomagnetic forces of the planet and a variety of effects spanning large populations. A 2003 study found strong empirical support in favor of a geomagnetic storm effect in stock returns. 
and evidence of substantially higher returns around the world during periods of quiet geomagnetic activity. Other research has linked geomagnetic activity to suicide, heart disease, and even birth rates. A particularly curious global effect is related to a standing electromagnetic wave that exists between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. Known as the Schumann resonance, this wave has a frequency of 7.8 Hz and is frequently referenced in alternative theories of consciousness. Measurements by Dr. Persinger have shown that the fundamental and harmonics of the Schumann resonance were discernible in normal human brain activity. And in fact, they correspond to Dr. Beck's anxiety-reducing ELF fields. Stranger still was Persinger's study of the remote viewer Ingo Swan. Remote viewing refers to a technique used by psychic spies working for the CIA. They were able to see far off locations as if they were there, and they could even move through time. Ingo Swan was one of the first and most accurate viewers in this program. When Dr. Persinger measured his brain's electromagnetic activity during viewing sessions, he found a spike in activity at 7 Hertz, which correlated with the most accurate viewings. Could it be that Swan was able to project his consciousness by tuning into a standing geomagnetic wave of the Earth? All of this adds up to a fascinating connection between our brains and the shared magnetic field not only of our planet, but potentially of the entire universe. It's undeniable that the brain responds to magnetic forces on a local and a global scale. While no one has been able to prove the involvement of magnetite, it seems a likely suspect. If we learn to harness the power of these tiny antennas in our brain, who knows what kind of psychic superpowers we might unlock. <laughs>